Hello and welcome to a Wine Guardian service video. Today I'd like to take a few minutes to describe how to change out the main control board on the Wine Guardian through the wall units. Now there are a limited number of Wine Guardian units where this control board change will be necessary. It was really not part of the original design, so it's uh, something you should do with a bit of care. But listen to this, uh, these instructions carefully and you should be able to do it quickly and accurately. First of all, of course, this is an installed unit which has failed. So you have to go over to the unit and take it out of its wall sleeve. I mean, you're probably going to have some mounting there, perhaps some uh, sort of uh, caulk, something around the unit. But you have to take that entire Wine Guardian unit out of its sleeve. Of course, unplug it, disconnect the condensate pump if there is a condensate drain on it, and put the unit on a table or some kind of workbench. Before we go to work on this unit, we should put together the, all of the tools which we'll require to uh, complete this task. There's several of them, but it's uh, best to gather them at the beginning of the uh, job. A number two Phillips head screwdriver. Number two will do it for the screws that are on here. A cordless drill, a 1 8 inch drill bit, a hand pop rivet gun. We're actually going to have to take out some rivets and put them back in. Uh, and those rivets, you have to put back two of them. They should be 1 8 inch pop rivets. Uh, we also need two nut drivers, uh, because you have to remove some nuts here, a quarter inch nut driver and a 5 sixteenths nut driver. Uh, we will need a pair of wire cutters and then one of those plastic zip ties, probably about six inches, maybe a bit less. So those are the things you'll need to adequately complete uh, the job. Now, let's get to work. First, you have to look at the face of the unit where the controls are and remove the front plastic panel. You do that by unscrewing the grill. There are two screws that are at the bottom of that plastic panel, uh, very close to the control. You have to unscrew each of those. Then you have to slightly lift up the control panel and pull it out. Uh, then the grill can be removed and put aside. Now once you have removed that front grill, don't forget to do exactly the same to the rear grill. That's the uh, uh, condenser side of the unit. And Once you have those two grills off, you can easily remove the metal housing. Now once the grill is removed from the front of the unit, we need to take off the metal housing. It's on the sides and the top of the unit. There are actually eight screws which need to be removed. Two of those are on the top of the unit. The other six are on the side of the unit. So if you remove all eight of those screws carefully, the entire metal casing of the unit will now be a bit loose and it can be gently lifted upwards and put aside so that you can work on the unit itself. Our next step is to remove the metal panel which is directly above the compressor. You can of course see the compressor from the side of the unit at this point, but there's a black dark panel which needs to be removed. When removing this panel, we need to use a nut driver, not a screwdriver, we actually need a nut driver to remove the panel at this point. Now once we have that top metal panel off, we need to remove two rivets. This is where you're going to have to use your 1 8 inch uh, drill bit and the cordless drill. Those rivets are located in different places. One is actually on the top of that metal cross piece. It's sort of the metallic looking piece. The second one is on the side of the unit. That's the side of the unit where the uh, wires go above the compressor. So drill both of those out. Once you've removed those rivets, we need to get a 5 16th inch screwdriver and work very carefully on the three screws which are directly next to the control board. That's on the inside of that metal panel we're trying to remove. Be a little bit careful because you're actually going to have to work very close to the coil of the unit. But once you have those three screws removed, you'll be able to slide the entire panel outward gently, probably uh, over the compressor and over the coil, and that will allow us to work on the control board itself. The first step in working on removing the control board is to remove the terminal block. Uh, you can see it in the photo here. Uh, it shows it being removed. It's that black part there, but you actually need to remove that entire terminal block. Next step, you need to get out that wire cutter you have and go with the zip tie. It's just a plastic zip tie, but cut that so that the wires can be more easily moved back and forth. Once that's done, Remove the screws that hold the board to the panel. You'll find those right at the corner of the board, but if you remove each of those, the entire panel can gently move out of place. Now once you've cut that zip tie, you're actually ready to start working on removing wires. 
There are only two wires which must be removed at this point. They are the bottom two wires only. The others remain connected, but remove those bottom two wires. Now that the board is slid out of place, gently remove the remaining wires on the board. It should slide out uh, and take that old board out. That's the one you're going to uh, be replacing, of course. Now be very careful with the spacers. There are four spacers under that board. They may have come out with the board, but be sure they are back in place on the metal cabinet. That's very important because they actually insulate that control board from the surrounding metal box. Once all the wires are removed, you can actually slide the new board right into place. It's exactly the same shape, size as the old board, so it slides right in. Then we use those same four holes to screw the new board in place of the old board. So just slide that in and screw it down firmly on those spacers. Now we can start to reattach the wires in exactly the same order as they were removed. You may need to refer to the schematic diagram. If you need to look at that, it is in our latest version of the Installation and Operations Guide. If you really needed to, please go on to our website at wineguardian.com and you can download the latest schematic. We'll be able to test at the end to make sure you've done the wiring correctly, but the schematic will help guide you if you don't remember exactly how the wires were connected to the board. Once the board is in place, we need to continue reassembling the unit, much as we took it apart. We need to put that metal connector back. That's the one that we removed with the uh, drill because we took out the two rivets. We need to put that back in place and use those two new rivets you have to anchor it. We need to reconnect the terminal block, slide it back in place much as you did before, and then use three screws on the top there to connect that plate. Once the plate is connected, you can slide the black metal piece, the cover, back into place. It fits nicely over the uh, reset button there and can be reconnected with screws. Now that you have that plate in place, you can test the entire unit. You can actually plug it in and see if it operates. Now don't forget that once you plug it in, you need to wait five minutes before anything will happen due to the uh, compressor time delay. So plug that unit back in and take a five minute break. After five minutes, be sure to turn the unit on and both fans should operate. Both the condenser fan and the evaporator fan should operate. If they operate, you have changed the board correctly. If not, you still have a problem. It might be due to how you connected the wires or some other issue, but at this point, both fan motors should work correctly. If they do, you're almost done. It's time to put the top cover back in place and screw it down. Now, once the unit is fully assembled, uh, with its metal cover in place and its front and back panel, it's time to slide it back into that sleeve, just as you found it, and put it back, caulk around the edges, but leave it exactly as you found it. Of course, remember to plug it in, and if it was a condensate drain, remember to reconnect the condensate drain. Now, about that board, we really would like it back. That will help us understand what's happened with this unit. So please be sure to return that board to Wine Guardian service. Uh, by the way, uh, if you have any further questions, of course, you can look at our website, you can look at our installation manual, but if you want to talk to somebody, our service department is available. If you need Wine Guardian service, it's 315-452-7000. Again, that's area code 315-452-7000. So thanks for watching this video. I'm sure it'll help you complete this work quickly and accurately. So thank you again.